The third and final fossil fuel type that we'll be going through in this section is natural gas. Natural gas is a mixture of hydrocarbon gases that can be burned as fuel. The main constituent of the mixture is methane, which usually represents 85 to 90 percent of the blend. As we learned in a previous section, natural gas is found in gas caps, which are pockets located above oil deposits. Natural gas used to be just vented or flamed when drilling for oil, meaning it was just released into the atmosphere or burned to get rid of it in the process of obtaining the oil. But now the technology exists that allows it to be collected and purified for energy applications. During the purification, the non-methane components of the mixture, which can include propane, butane, and other hydrocarbons and other non-hydrocarbon contaminants, are separated out such that the gas that gets distributed for use is just pure methane. There are a couple of approaches for extracting natural gas out of the earth. The conventional extraction method, which is shown in this diagram as standard drilling, involves drilling down through the gas cap and into reservoirs made of sandstone or limestone. And if you've ever handled sandstone or limestone before, you probably notice that it has a high permeability. The material is put together loosely, it crumbles relatively easily, and that means that the natural gas that is trapped within the pores can freely flow through the material and be pumped out. This is not the case for all types of rocks that form natural gas reservoirs, though. Hydraulic fracturing, also known as fracking, is an approach that is used to drill into rock layers that have extremely low permeability, but are nonetheless storing pockets of natural gas. An example of such a rock type is shale. Because of the low permeability of rocks like shale, the gas pockets can't flow freely through the material and be pumped out. So as a solution, what fracking does is blast slick water, which is a mixture of water, sand, and chemical additives into the rock at an extremely high pressure. And the effect of blasting this water is that fractures are created in the rock, which creates connections between gas pockets and improves permeability so that the gas can be pumped out. Like with coal and oil, uh, um, there are multiple environmental impacts brought on by the drilling and burning of natural gas. A big one is contamination. The slick water used in fracking can contaminate groundwater sources with the chemical additives that are included in it. In addition, the fracking fluid flowback, which is the term used to describe the slick water that is withdrawn back out of the well, contains a number of contaminants from underground, including heavy metals, radioactive material, volatile organic compounds, and toxic airborne pollutants. Fracking also brings about increases in seismic activity, also known as induced earthquakes, which are tremors and earthquakes that are not naturally occurring, but rather caused by human, human activity. In 2016, the U.S. Geological Survey released a report conducting that up to 7.9 million people in parts of Texas, Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, um, sorry, Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas were facing the same level of risk of earthquakes as people in the state of California, which you may know lies on the San Andreas fault line. And this is an indirect result of fracking activity in those states. And then finally, like the other types of fossil fuels, combustion of natural gas releases carbon dioxide emissions, which enhances the greenhouse effect. And although natural gas is considered a fossil fuel, because it originates in the same way as other fossil fuels, not all natural gas is ancient in origin. Natural gas can also be created via renewable pathways. The way that this is done is through biogas reactors. Biogas reactors are machines that transform organic matter, including dead plant matter, animal waste, and even human sewage waste into natural gas. Biogas reactors are an anaerobic chamber, meaning a chamber that is lacking in oxygen. And by placing, placing the slurry of organic waste into the chamber and maintaining certain temperature conditions, the slurry is made to break down through anaerobic decomposition by microorganisms, which is parallel to what happens when fossil fuel natural gas is created. The natural gas is emitted by the microorganisms as they eat the waste material, and the product is referred to as biogas. 
<clears throat> the biogas is siphoned off and used in the same manner as conventional natural gas. And then the remaining slurry, which is now called digestate, can be piped out and used as fertilizer. So this is a more renewable, sustainable manner of producing natural gas. Of course, it doesn't mitigate the fact that burning that natural gas still generates carbon dioxide emissions, but it does mitigate some of the other harmful consequences. And <clears throat> if you think about it, um, that organic matter needs to be degraded one way or another. And so um, this is more of a... Uh, of a cyclical nature that we see in biogeochemical cycling um, that is short term anyway that comes from those uh, that that natural gas that's burned off and so this brings us to the end of our discussion about natural gas <clears throat> and we want to close out the section by looking at a few facts about fossil fuel use as a whole in the u.s and the co2 emissions that they generate We've now looked in detail at the three types of fossil fuels and together the combustion of these fossil fuels for primary and secondary energy generates 80% of the human caused CO2 emissions in the US. There are other non-energy related sources of CO2 emissions. For example, livestock give off CO2, but these are relatively small compared to the CO2 emissions that are tied to our energy production. And again, we need to be mindful that the livestock are consuming organic matter that needs to decay anyway, but CO2 emissions from these sources of fossil fuels are um, coming from carbon sinks that left untouched would be there for a very long time. It's also important to note that the three different fossil fuels are not equal in terms of their CO2 emissions per unit energy that they generate. This table here shows you the three fossil fuel types and then in the right hand column the number of pounds of CO2 that they release per unit of energy. In this case the unit energy represented is a BTU which stands for British Thermal Unit. A BTU is a measurement of heat energy. It's the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. So the combustion of enough coal to generate a million BTUs produces 212 pounds of CO2. Combustion of enough oil, specifically gasoline, to produce the same amount of energy uh, produces less, only 156 pounds of CO2. And then natural gas is even lower at 117 pounds of CO2 per BTU. And in recent decades, the US has been transitioning its energy infrastructure away from reliance on coal and toward a greater reliance on natural gas, which is seen as a good thing because of the lower level of emissions that natural gas generates per unit energy. You can see in this graph how much of our electricity in the U.S. has been produced from these various sources, and you can see that the dark gray line, which represents coal, was for a long time the largest share of electricity production in the U.S., Natural gas has been on the rise quickly since the 1990s and has been replacing coal to the point where, in 2015, natural gas overtook coal as the largest source of electricity generation in the U.S. So this is seen as a good thing in terms of emissions, but there is also some concern about the level of leakage of natural gas being unaccounted for when those emissions are calculated. Because given that natural gas is a gas, it's more difficult to contain than liquid oil or solid coal. It's known that there is some level of methane leakage at every step of the process for natural gas, from its drilling to its storage to its processing, transportation, and distribution. Some methane escapes and leaks into the atmosphere at each of these steps, and methane is a powerful greenhouse gas. So some analysis um, has shown that this high amount of leakage may actually cancel out the CO2 emissions benefit um, from that natural gas carries. So there may be no winning with fossil fuels. In the following section, we will look at a different type of non-renewable energy, one that does not fall into the fossil fuels category and is much cleaner in terms of emissions but comes with its own set of risks, and that is nuclear energy.